Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Boom's XB-1 complete second flight. Pilot convicted for lying on med app. Class action suit filed against CrowdStrike. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Boom's XB-1 completes second flight. Boom Supersonic announced its XB-1 demonstrator aircraft executed its second flight successfully at Mojave Air and Space Port in Mojave, California. XB-1 continues to progress through its flight test program and provide a foundation for the development of Overture, the company's supersonic airliner. The landing gear was cycled through retraction and extension for the first time successfully. The other objectives for the flight were for the XB-1 team to assess the handling qualities of the aircraft and to activate a newly added digital stability augmentation system, a roll damper, which was added in response to information gleaned from the first flight. And to verify the aerodynamic characteristics of the aircraft, tufting was applied to the right wing to observe and evaluate the strength and direction of the airflow across the wing. Boom Supersonic boss Blake Scholl said, quote, XB-1 had a fantastic second flight this morning. Initial results indicate we've successfully resolved the findings from Flight 1 and are excited to continue flight testing on the path to supersonic flight, end quote. For Boom's chief test pilot Tristan Geppetto Brandenburg, this was his first time at the controls of XB-1. He previously flew the T-38 chase plane for XB-1's first flight and will pilot XB-1 for the balance of the flight test program, including the first supersonic flight. After the break, son of founder bequeaths $1 million to 99s. The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The Surewings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit Surewings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Son of founder bequeaths $1 million to 99s. Josephine or Jody Wood Wallingford and her sister Frances Wood Adair took flying lessons when they were teens in 1929 at Clover Field, later to become Santa Monica Airport in California. Jody finished and earned her private pilot license number 9129 when few women learned to fly airplanes. Her only son, Frederick Messenger, or Bill Wallingford Jr., made a visit to the 99 Museum in OKC in 2005 after Jody passed on. So inspired was he by the museum's collection that he decided to make a generous donation to the museum for the establishment of an endowment fund. SpaceX moving toward next Starship launch. The next launch of SpaceX's Starship Integrated Flight Test 5 was originally announced as potentially happening in early August. That schedule has obviously slipped a bit and is now slated for the first week of September as SpaceX is awaiting the expected FAA certification for the launch. The launch has already been certified by the FCC. Given the demonstrated progressive success of the last two launches, there should be no reason to think the FAA is doing anything other than its usual committee think in approving the mission. Uruguayan Air Force purchases Embraer A-29 Super Tucanos. 
Embraer renounced the sale of up to six A-29 Super Tucano aircraft to the Uruguayan Air Force. The deal includes one aircraft plus a commitment to purchase five more with deliveries beginning in 2025, as well as mission equipment, integrated logistics, and a flight sim. Uruguay will become the sixth country to operate the aircraft in South America, along with Paraguay, Chile, Colombia, Brazil, and Ecuador. The aircraft can be deployed on several mission profiles, mainly for controlling illegal activities, monitoring the border, recon, and advanced training. Pilatus Expanding U.S. Operations Pilatus has signed a deal with the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport to construct a state-of-the-art sales and service facility on the north side of the airport. The new customer center will create about 50 jobs in aircraft sales, service, design, and delivery of Pilatus aircraft in the southeastern U.S. The U.S. is currently the largest market for Pilatus business aircraft, primarily the PC-12 turboprop and the PC-24 jet, and the investment in this facility is to ensure world-class experiences for Pilatus owners. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Pilot convicted for lying on MedApp. A federal jury has convicted Olu Coyote Ojo, age 36, of Dallas, Texas, of two counts of making a false statement to the FAA to obtain a medical certificate necessary to pilot a commercial passenger aircraft. A federal jury returned a two-count superseding indictment against Ojo, charging him with two counts of making a false statement. On August 16, 2024, a federal jury found him guilty twice. Evidence presented at trial indicated that Ojo, an FAA-certified commercial airline pilot, pled guilty to two misdemeanor theft charges on February 8, 2023, in Kentucky State Court in connection with a theft of passenger luggage from the Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport. Ojo then made false statements to the FAA while applying for an FAA first-class medical certificate to conceal his history of prior criminal convictions. A first-class medical certificate permits an airman to pilot commercial passenger aircraft. Following the guilty verdict, U.S. District Judge Jody W. Dishman ordered Ojo to be detained pending sentencing, where he faces up to five years in federal prison and fines up to $250,000 on each count. The case is a result of an investigation by the TSA. After these messages, class action suit filed against CrowdStrike. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows actually, so ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Class action suit filed against CrowdStrike. A class action has been filed against CrowdStrike Holdings following a system-wide software outage in late July. This left thousands of travelers with canceled flights, leaving millions of dollars in losses behind. After the outage, they published a root cause analysis stating that there had been a mismatch in the inputs passed through the content validator and those supplied to the content interpreter. Delta, along with several other airlines, relied on CrowdStrike's Windows-based computers and terminals. In total, Delta Airlines canceled over 5,000 flights between July 19th and July 25th due to the software fault. 
Christopher and Sarah Harlan were two of the thousands of passengers who got hit with a cancellation. The couple was on vacation in the Dominican Republic at the time and were forced to pay for food in hotels while they waited to make alternate travel plans. These transactions were not reimbursed by the carrier. The Harlans filed the lawsuit against CrowdStrike in federal court. While facing a lawsuit of their own for their failure to refund canceled passengers, Delta has expressed a desire to bring another suit against CrowdStrike. The two have been playing the blame game since the outage occurred, and the airline wants revenge for the $550 million they lost. That's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.